Coach, if you want to just start with an opening how the off season's been and yeah. I need to go over here. <laughs> Do I have to look at you or T V. Nope, us. Always lies. <laughs> okay. Uh well, uh we're we're getting fired up. Uh football started actually, uh, if you didn't notice this weekend, uh, CFL started. Sat home Saturday night and watched two games, got going again. I love it. But uh, we're, we're about halfway through our summer, uh, getting ready for the 2019 season and uh, looking forward to, to a challenging schedule. The summer's been going good, guys are working out, and uh, uh, so we're moving right along according to schedule. How many guys do you have here and how many of them are on aid? I'm, I'm, uh, I, numbers I don't know um, for sure, uh, but um, the majority of the team and the uh, majority of the teams on some form of summer school, which is good, which is a, which is a uh, uh, change from the past around here. So uh, I think two years ago we set the expectation about uh, how important summer program is, and now it's not even a question. The guys, the guys saw the benefits of it, uh, you know, and I think uh, they know what they have to do now. And what, you know, like I said, it's not a not like you're pulling teeth and dragging them out here. It's, it's hey, get here and let's and let's uh, let's do this. It's a big culture change around here. What is it off of last year's team or year as a whole? What do you want to build off of from last year and continue it into this year? Uh, just we we got a uh, big thing is uh, two years ago we lost our final three. Uh, this last year we lost our final two. We got to finish better. Um, we finished better this year. This past season in 2018, we're in the playoffs, and we didn't do that. We got to we got to uh, we got to finish with a string at the end. We got to finish strong, and, and that was uh, get. We got to get better from that standpoint. For, well, that's for sure. That's one thing for sure. Absolutely. You mentioned your schedule. Um, I think you have what a week one by, and then. 12 straight games. Yeah. What uh, I guess? What are your general thoughts on on your schedule, and what kind of uh, challenges and opportunities will it present? Very, very challenging. Uh, we get to. What's kind of cool is we get to go play in, in some of the best stadiums. Uh, Rice Eccles, Lavelle Edwards. Those are always excellent. I've been, I've been in games both places, uh, but we also get to go to. Uh, some venues in one double A that are considered the best going to the Unidome in, uh, in, in Cedar Falls and going up to Wash Grizz. You know, those are those are stadiums that that are uh, uh, unique to one double A that are really fun to play in. You know, in addition, our road, our road schedule is tough as it is anyways. We uh, other than well, what do we got? We, we play every team in the state of Utah except Utah State, every Division One team in the state of Utah except Utah State, and they're all down there. So that, that's kind of cool. Uh, and then good home schedule, North Dakota coming in. Portland State's always tough. Um, uh, Eastern Washington, obviously, everybody knows who they are. Uh, that that'll be a, a fun game to have. And then Northern Colorado's going to be much improved. So it's it's definitely a challenging schedule. There was a uh, one of those uh, uh, people that. I don't know one of the sports outlets or whatever had us on one of the toughest schedules in the nation. You know, I don't know how much credibility that that thing has, but uh, they had us. So someone thinks we got a tough schedule, but if you look at the Big Sky, and you know a lot of Big Sky teams are in that, and a lot of uh, Missouri Valley teams, you know, and, and look at the two premier conferences in the United States right now at the one AA level. It's the Big Sky and the Missouri Valley. So. Uh, week in, week out, you're going to be playing a team that's uh, uh, no matter where they fit into the scale, they're they're going to be well prepared and very competitive. A brutal schedule should build toughness in your guys. I mean, <laughs> what is the mindset of the guys going into this season, knowing that they're going to be challenged and they get to face some great athletes? I think I said this a couple of years ago when I took the job over here that these guys will go out in the parking lot and play anybody. They don't they don't know any better. They just want to go play people and hit people and, mm -hmm. and do all that stuff. So uh, I don't I don't think that, that uh, I don't think that, that intimidates them, you know, at all. 
I, I said they they enjoy playing the game. That's a big thing. And as long as you do that, it's not it's not a burden to go play these go play these games. Plus, you know, as I said about some of the conference schools, you know, like going up to Montana or Montana State or you know playing down at down uh, down in Ogden or whatever. Those are all tough places to play. But it, you're in the conference. You have to do it. So uh, it's 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 part of the deal. Yeah, I almost think you've got to step up. I mean, when you guys played Cal last season, all of you were like, oh, it's just another game. It's just another game. So That's going into BYU, Utah, is it it's just another game? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think. But it's another game against a team that's like ranked 16th in the nation for <laughs> each season. So, uh, but it's, it's yeah, it's just, hey, you got, you got to go play them. You know, and that's what you do. You, you sign them up and, and they got the buses and the food and everything and we have to go do it so we can't get out of it. Knowing that you have those 12 games in a row, I mean, will that change the way you approach your subs or whether you rest guys or your rotations, anything like yeah, that? Yeah, it'll, it changes how we go all the way through fall camp. You know, you, you, uh, uh, what we did was instead of taking the bye week, coming in way early, and then taking the bye week where it actually fell, we pushed that back to the beginning of the camp so the guys report later. Because, you know, there's only, after so many practices, we're tired of them, they're tired of us, they know what they're doing. You know, you, you get to a point of diminishing returns, especially we don't have the numbers uh, that, that, some, that, you know, the big Division ones have. So, uh, uh, that's where that's where we're gonna you know our camp's gonna be shorter but not shorter okay mm -hmm. you know we could bring them in last week of July and then treat that first bye week like a regular bye week as you would during the season then we're just gonna go through you know I talked with 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 Mike Ferreter and Roger Cooper and David Fia Fia about it you know and how that would affect our preparation it wouldn't it wouldn't affect it if we shortened camp that way so keep their legs and then and then with the new redshirt rule where you can play four games. Okay, that's also uh, that also helps get some guys in and all that. But yeah, you have to you have to uh, you have to monitor that. There was one year uh, school I was previously at. Uh, we our bye week was the first week, 2008, 2008, and we went 15 in a row, and uh, and you, you don't get a chance to breathe. All of a sudden, the season's over. And you come, it's like you come up for air out of the, you know out from underneath the wall. <sighs> You know, you wait. Well, we're done. So, um, it can be done. It's not easy. And uh, shoot, if if I think, and this would be like totally awesome to happen, get into playing 17. <laughs> if, but you know, that I just want to get through one first. Um, you guys were you, you made a, an appearance in some of the national polls. At a certain point last season, but you're not making, you're not getting into those preseason polls. Um, is that something that matters, or do you guys kind of like flying under the radar? Like Perfect, that? love it. That's I think I've said that since I got back. I love it. Um, kind of get on that. Yeah. Who, level. who knows? I mean, shoot. Uh, there's some schools in this conference that if they had the record we did, they'd be ranked number one in the nation. Uh, but uh, um, you just got to win. I mean, you, you got to win, and when you get there, you can't lose. And that's what happened last year. We got there and 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 didn't perform the way we should have in a game, and got knocked out of the deal. Um, but no, the only way to get in, you know, is is win games. You know, and that's <laughs> simple enough. Football's been essentially, you know, on vacation for a month-ish for the guys. But if we can stretch back to spring ball, is there something that you remember when you're leaving spring ball that these guys, something stood out to you? And I mean, like, either skill-wise, I mean, it could just be offense, defense, or just certain guys. Is there just something that you can look back and go, hey, we were doing that right? No, I think we did a good job of providing or developing depth. You know, we, we, had, uh, we had some guys that were held out. Uh, and... And we did a good job developing that that depth on both sides of the ball, which was really good. I think we went into that that spring game with uh, uh, five guys that started last year not playing, so we had you know six, you know, however it was we had you yeah. know new quarterback and 
new tackle, but we had five, other than that, we had five other starters that were out. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was, it was good and we functioned. We didn't look like, uh, didn't look like a, a peewee team. Right. So, and then, uh, you know, defense continued to grow, get some depth and, and they had some guys held out as well. So I uh, thought the guys uh, did a good job. Uh, they came back in pretty good shape from what I understand. So that means they, you know, I know there's a few that, that play Fortnite for three weeks, but there's some that, you know, others that, that, that did their prescribed workout that Dan Ryan gives them. Absolutely. And then my go-to question always, what are you most excited for about 2019? Just getting it started. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, going out and getting the guys going again and see where we are. And I, it'll be it'll be exciting to see you know uh, how how the new quarterbacks do. Uh, excited to see how Soja Nasu does in a uh, in a permanent role rather than just a redshirt role where he's playing four games. Uh, you know, see uh, I'll see Demonte come back and and uh, have a great sophomore year. You know, Jack Tuafono is going to have to play a whole bunch, and I'm just speaking offensively now. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know. Christian McFarland on defense, another year in the program, and uh, you know, I like I like our I like our our secondary issue. We could potentially start four seniors in the back end, which is fun to see. And uh, uh, the guy the guy that is interesting is Garrett Crane. He's changed his body, and a uh, kid from local kid from Highland here. I'm excited to see how how he does um, um, with another year under his belt. Same with Terrence Jones. Mm -hmm. A couple of names that probably. Haven't heard, uh, but but they're going to be hopefully guys that that have uh, that step up. And then my follow-up question to that is: your veterans, you know, your Mitch Fellers, your Mikey Deans, even your McFarland. What do you want out of those guys to to I don't know bring to the program this year? Uh, leadership and um, want them to just pick up where they left off, you know. But we're going to be uh, looking a lot to to Mikey and Mitch and. And Ty Flanagan, and you know all those guys on the line. Shoot, we got four guys on the line that have started better part of two to three years, and that's always a good thing. That doesn't happen at in college football. <clears throat> um, so those guys are all veterans. I mean, shoot, we you know we can end up having uh, seven, eight seniors starting mm -hmm. on offense, and then on defense, Christian McFarland, Ad Ken Aguirre, you know, in the back end there are safeties and Cody Graves at linebacker, and and those guys. Uh, need to provide leadership and direction to this program where it's, it's not all on us coaches anymore it's it's a collective absolutely yeah and given that you have all, all those seniors even you know you're a lot of non-starters are senior veteran guys um i guess what does that give you and how does that help knowing that those guys have been here a while and they've kind of been through the ups and downs they've been through the ups and downs uh they know the system they know what's expected of them so it's uh, uh they don't have, you know, take a lot of time teaching them a whole bunch of stuff, and then they can take the younger guys when they get here, the new the new crew, and and kind of guide them a little bit. But it's I think we have 27 seniors. I mean, obviously you can't they don't all get to play at the same time, uh, but that's a that's a good sign. Generally, when you have a large senior class, it's generally a, a you know chance for a successful season. And uh, I said they're going to provide a lot of leadership. And looking forward to what they, you know, watching them go, and then and then hugging them when we play Eastern. <laughs> and when it comes to team captains, do you just let the guys. We we that? vote on those during camp, so okay. that'll that'll be the week for the first game. Okay, so and that's all on the guys. Yep, that's okay. that's all on the guys. Going back to your seniors, and given that you you have a lot of them, I mean, does that kind of give you guys as a team more of a sense of urgency, or more of a you know, this is kind of our year to. There's always a sense of urgency. Yeah, you, you don't ever you don't ever relax. It's it's yeah. It, it's never to that point where you're like, yeah, we got this. It doesn't it doesn't work that way. That's uh, when the minute you do that, you're looking for a new job. So we're uh, uh, no, we have a tremendous. The, the team has a tremendous amount of urgency. I think they're they're not fulfilled with you know last year and uh, and still want to go out and and show the town, show the city, show the university that. Uh, uh, you know, we're we're still moving in the right direction. That wasn't a flash in the pan last year. Mm -hmm. It's year three under you. Does this ever seem to get a little bit easier on you? No, it's it, it's. If, if I don't know, I live in fear of my job, so I'm always 
panic that if I'm not doing something right, something's going to happen. So no, I'll, I, that's that's part of the urgency. Absolutely. Yeah. Will you kind of uh, tell me about some of the camps that you guys have hosted and that some of your assistants have traveled to? Oh shoot. Well, we just had high school camps here the last two weeks. We had an eight-man camp two weeks ago and an eleven-man camp, and uh, it was really good. Uh, the, those guys, the the staff. They work. They work harder in June. You know, obviously they go out and go recruiting all May, so they're away from their families. Then they come home, and then we jump into these camps where you're going from eight in the morning till nine thirty at night, and 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 then so so you get to see a bunch of high school kids there. You know, but it's a grind. It it, it wears you out. Um, those guys do a great job, and Roger Cooper does an exceptional job of running the thing. Uh, but then there's some other, you know, camps. This time of year is is camp time, and and if you have the opportunity to go work one somewhere else, that just expands your recruiting base. And so, um, you know, just the, just if there's some local ones or whatever, guys can go work. You know, some local universities, or or if there's you know a reason for someone to go out uh, to the West Coast or something to do it, it's uh, it's a good it's a good thing. It's maybe a rhetorical question, but what is your goal? When. <laughs> win that's uh you know be competitive but win that's what that's only one thing you know obviously uh you want to have uh, great grades and all that stuff uh, that's uh, on our door you know what's number one get an isu degree but you know we want to win games as well and be and be competitive and make a uh, be a be a factor in the big sky conference put ourselves in position uh to uh um Put ourselves in a position to to either make the playoffs or win the Big Sky Championship at the end of the season. And last year we did. We put ourselves in position to make the playoffs and didn't finish. Mm -hmm. And even there was a point where you know shoot we're we're put our position put ourselves in position to win the dang thing. Mm -hmm. So that's what you want to do. Good. Anything else for Coach? Okay. Thanks, Thanks, Coach. Yeah.